Hey everyone, this is Matt here with Night Run Studio. For almost a year now, I've been working on my dream game, Willard, and I could not be more excited about how things are coming along. Willard is a unique hybrid game. It includes puzzle platforming, where the player will have to manipulate the environment in order to progress, but it will also feature a relatively open world, where the player gets to decide whether to explore that old mine shaft, to keep climbing and see what's at the top of the mountain, or to continue along the current path and see what's on the other side of that tunnel. As you explore, you'll also collect new items and equipment. In this way, Willard uses RPG-like systems where your stats will level you up for combat, help to open up new areas of discovery, but will also let you gain skills to do things like persuading your townspeople to do what you want. Now, if townspeople sounds a little out of place for a puzzle platformer, that's because Willard also features a city building mode where you can design and manage a town of refuge. But you won't just have to manage and grow the town, you'll also have to defend it against enemy attacks. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm brand new to this. One year ago, I could barely code a player to move left and right, and my original art direction would have made the creators of E.T. look like Renaissance painters. But I had this idea for a game, and I just felt like I had to bring it to life. So in this devlog, I'm gonna look back a little on last year, but mostly, I just want to show you what stage Willard's currently at and give you an idea of where it's headed in the future. At the start of every summer, I meet my brother in the mountains for some exploration and extreme exhaustion. This summer's meeting felt a little like a metaphor for Willard's first year of development. Beard versus mountain, take three. So we've now been hiking for a couple of hours. We've climbed the mountain, hit a couple Two peaks, mountains. and actually it turns out that we went up the wrong mountain. That one over there with the gondola. Yeah, that's where we were supposed to go. So we're headed there next. In the last 12 months, I have climbed a lot of mountains. Strangely, none of them was the mountain I thought I was climbing when I started out. Last summer, the mountain I thought I was climbing was to create a demo for my platforming levels. On the surface, this went really well. My pixel art was improving quickly. Each new character model was significantly better than the one before it. My environments were also improving. In a short time, they moved from bland and lifeless to ugly and lifeless. Soon, they were less ugly and lifeless. And then finally, they actually started to resemble a world you might want to explore. All the while, my coding skills were improving. As I tried out different player controls and slowly coded in physics interactions and simple puzzles. By the end of the summer, I iced the cake by adding a dialogue and simple cutscene system. It looked like I was on my way to a demo. Unfortunately, not all was as it seemed. For example, this puzzle might look like fun. You can use the environment in interesting, sometimes humorous ways, and ultimately work your way over the obstacles. Sadly, in fact, the controls are clunky and the physics are way harder than they look. This video cuts out the minutes of failed attempts and awkwardly pushing or jumping against objects until they finally did what I wanted them to. To be honest, these puzzles were about as much fun as poking your eyeballs with a staple gun. By late August, I had climbed my first mountain, but it turned out this was not a demo mountain. It was a learn a bunch of stuff but don't actually make anything permanent mountain. It looked like I had a new mountain to climb. From September through November, I rebuilt Willard from scratch. Once again, I thought I was climbing a demo mountain, but it turns out that you can't start that mountain if you don't know your core mechanics. That's when I discovered the Anima system. Willard's world is overrun with out-of-control technology. Few people have survived in this world, and for those who have, machines limit their ability to communicate and travel. Willard would have the same problem if it weren't for the Anima Cannon, an almost magical device he finds that allows him to power up some machines and overcharge others. December rolled around, but I was ecstatic. I finally knew the core mechanic that would govern the puzzle elements of my game. I was ready to make a demo, except that I wasn't. Starting in December, I cooked up a whole bunch of great puzzles, but there was a new problem. While I now had my core mechanic, I was still lacking a core gameplay loop. The gameplay loop refers to the actions that govern the player's experience minute by minute during a game. It's a repetitive series of actions that the player will engage in as they play. For Willard's platforming levels, a key piece of this gameplay loop would include collecting crafting materials, equipping new gear, and battling enemies. I had puzzles, but before I could get a real proof of concept, 
I had a lot of work to do. So December and January were all about finding the rhythms of combat. I spent learning to code and design battle, but more importantly, I had to decide how battle would function in my puzzle levels in general. I talk about this in detail in my philosophy of combat dev blog, but the main takeaways were that I wanted combat to feel fun, but to require problem solving. I also wanted it to be challenging, but not to take center stage. The platforming levels had to be first about exploration and problem solving, and only secondarily about combat. With enemies in the game, I needed a place to store items, and I needed the ability to equip better gear. This turned into a two-month odyssey, where I did an ODC and deep dive into user interface systems. That sounds like about as much fun as eating a kale and rice cake sandwich, then I'll spare you the details. And for those code geeks out there who like to add a little quinoa to their kale and rice cake sandwich, you can check out my devlog on adding equipment to my game. But climbing this mountain was essential. This whole process leveled up my coding skills in all sorts of ways, and gave me the confidence to tackle even more complex systems. That brings us mostly to the present. From March until May, I added sound effects and recorded a whole bunch of original songs. If you're interested, you can visit the Willard playlist to hear more. I also rewrote my dialogue and cutscene systems to make it easier to add cinematics to the game. At the same time, I created some early designs for the small fishing village of Baker's Inlet. While I was on this graphics spree, I started to find my sweet spot for visuals. A few viewers had noticed that my art style was not particularly consistent. I used different pixel sizes for different objects, my color palette shifted a lot, and some of my pixel art gave my levels a too busy feel. So I revamped my tile set, using a sort of hybrid of pixel art and vector art. The result is much cleaner, and it's also a style that makes it easier for me to create new assets as my shapes are more geometric and have less textures for me to worry about. At long last, I had done it. As June rolled around, I had finally reached Demo Mountain. And this time, I took three weeks to put together a series of 10 mini levels that would allow me to test all of the core elements of Willard. I'm lucky to teach a game development course at the high school where I work. I decided that I would give this little demo to my students to see how many ways they could break it. And boy, did they ever break it. I knew the game wasn't perfect, and I knew my students would find bugs but I was not prepared for just how mercilessly they would search out those bugs. My students broke my game with a creative artistry surpassing even the depths of a Dostoevsky and existential crisis. They broke the items, they broke crates and barrels, they broke my UI, they even broke physics itself. Now, you might think that this would be wildly discouraging, but, well, okay, so it was pretty discouraging. But here's the twist. Two hours later, my students were still breaking my 10 minute demo. Now, I know that might not sound much like a bright side, but here's the thing. This was a purely optional task, but they didn't want to stop. In fact, the next morning, some of them came in early and voluntarily booted up Willard to try to break it some more. The fact is, they were having fun. No teenager voluntarily signs up to do a repetitive optional task if they aren't enjoying it. So, do I have a lot of work to do? I sure do. My first order of business this summer is going to be to tighten up my demo. I want to make it student-proof. I want to add more layers of things to do. I want Easter eggs, hidden areas, new places to explore, and I also want to tighten up that combat. Secondly, I want to start work on the next gameplay loop for Willard. I want to begin work on the city building and defense modes of the game. There's a lot of work to do. There's some pretty huge mountains before me too, and I don't doubt that I'll climb a whole bunch of the wrong ones before I get to the right ones. But hey, I'm a teacher, so with the summer stretching out before me right now, I'm ready to dig in and get climbing. If you're interested in following the journey, be sure to subscribe and sign up for alerts. You may even want to join the three other people who buy me coffees every month through my Patreon page. Huge thanks, by the way, to my patrons, Amelia, Joven, and Daniel. Your support really lets me know that people believe in what I'm doing. I hope to post a series of updates throughout the summer, so stay tuned as I chronicle the development of Willard. Until next time though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers. <laughs>